Being in use for a century, the high price of insulin continues to dominate headlines and draw the attention of lawmakers. Those in the industry blame each other for the high price tag, but patients say no matter whose fault it is, many are being priced out of affording a drug they need to stay alive. Here is our national investigative team's Lee Zurich with Profit Pump. Hey guys, I just picked up my insulin and I thought I'd share for some awareness. Megan Cornelius is a content creator sharing her experience with diabetes with millions of people. Do you think people are dying because they cannot take afford their insulin? 1000%. Like I can think of a couple of people on the top of my head that have died because of it. Um, that they just can't afford. They just can't afford it at all. They're priced out of affording insulin. A congressional report found over the past two decades, the three companies that control most of the insulin market dramatically raised the list prices of their rapid and long-acting insulins. Who's at fault here? Big Pharma, 1,000%. Here's how it works. Manufacturers make insulin. They sell it to pharmacies that fill the prescription for patients. But in the middle are the insurance companies who set what patients pay through things like copays and deductibles. But the complicated system doesn't stop there. And there are often pharmacy benefit managers or PBMs, companies that insurance companies hire to manage prescription drugs, negotiating the prices and creating lists of which brands will be covered. Now think of all this like a pie. Each part of the system gets a piece of the drug's overall cost. The manufacturers get the most, but USC research shows the portion insurance and PBMs get has been increasing. A trade and lobbying group for insurers places the blame back on drug companies, writing insulin prices are too high because Big Pharma alone sets and controls the price. The manufacturers help set the price, right? The manufacturers do set the price, that's absolutely true, but manufacturers also deeply discount their products, and they do that because they want the products to be more affordable for patients. And again, unfortunately, the significant discounts that manufacturers offer and provide on insulin products are too often being held by insurers and by their intermediaries, and they're not being passed along to patients at the pharmacy counter, and we think that's wrong and needs to change. One of the largest PBMs in the country, Express Scripts, says they aren't the problem. It's the manufacturer. Rebates uh, and pharma prices are constant negotiations, uh, but there's only one group that controls the prices, and that's them. Express Scripts says removing the PBM's piece of the pie doesn't remove the pricing problem. The argument, they act as a buyer's club. Behind the scenes, saving patients money at the counter when they use insurance. But do you think that the pharmaceutical companies would actually lower their prices out of benevolence? Or would prices go up even faster? So where's the truth? Congress believes the blame lies with both, calling out insurers and PBMs for incentivizing price hikes, but questioning drug companies' practice of raising prices in lockstep and manipulating the patent system to maintain a monopoly. One idea in Washington is to set a copay cap, blocking insurance and PBMs from charging over a certain amount. Megan Cornelius doesn't think a cap would solve the problem, but something needs to change to stop the industry's profit pump. They're absolutely exploiting Americans that need insulin. We can't live without it, so we have to figure out how to get it. Now, the U.S. House of Representatives passed a copay cap on insulin. The proposal would limit the out-of-pocket cost to no more than $35, and in some cases, even less for those with insurance. The Senate is now working through a companion bill. Leadership says it wants the bill to move forward by this summer.